Would you take your Bible this morning and turn to the 37th chapter of the book of Psalms, Psalm 37. Thank you, ladies, for that beautiful song. Today is a day of celebration, a day that we honor our graduates. We are proud of you. You've worked hard, and now you begin a new journey. And it is an exciting journey, but it's also an anxious time. And I want to share with you today just two verses of Scripture from God's Word. And in these two verses, there are three life lessons. And if you'll take these three lessons and put them in your heart and live them from this day to your last day on the earth, you'll find these three lessons will provide for you help for today and hope for tomorrow. They will see you throughout your life, regardless of what your life may bring. Psalm 37, we stand together to honor God and to thank Him for His inerrant word. And we're looking at verses 4 and 5. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Father, take the Word of God and plant it deep in our hearts that we may be doers of the Word and not hearers only. In the name of Jesus we pray, and God's people said, Amen. Please be seated. This particular psalm shares the wisdom of an old man as he reflects back on the years of his life. It was written by King David under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. And this psalm was actually used as a poem in the Hebrew classroom. It was originally written in the Hebrew language and Every other verse began with a succeeding letter of the Hebrew alphabet so it would be easy for the students to memorize it and remember it. And in these two verses, God gives us some guidelines to live by. And if we apply these guidelines, God has promised that He will enrich our life and He will bless our life. Graduates, I give you these three guidelines from God's Word. This is not going to be very long, but I want you to pay special attention. Verse 4 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. That's what he's saying. Now what does it mean to delight in the Lord? The, The word delight is used as a verb. It's an action word. It means literally to be happy or to be glad. And what David is teaching us, as the Holy Spirit led him to write, is that when we delight in the Lord, we are setting our priorities. We're putting our priorities in order. What he's talking about here is just putting Jesus first. About putting God first in your life. And graduates, I encourage you to make Jesus the priority of your life. Put Jesus first. Delight in the Lord. Be happy in Him. When you live a life of joy in the Lord and make Him your delight, then your desires will be in His will. This verse reminded me of a man I once knew whose name was Al. He owned a large and prosperous business. He was very successful. And I asked him one day how he had come to be so successful, and his answer surprised me. He said, I never started out to make a lot of money He said, I really did not start out to make a living. I wanted to make a life. I thought a lot about that. That's pretty good advice for graduates. That's pretty good advice for all of us. Amen? We have been called not just to make a living, but to make our life count. It's more than receiving a paycheck. It's an investment of all that God has gifted us to do and given us to do. Al recognized the importance of making his life count. And today, I encourage you 
to delight in the Lord, to make Jesus your priority. And then look at verse 5 again. David wrote, commit to the Lord. That word commit is an interesting word. It's found 18 times in the Old Testament. It means to pledge, to obligate, or to entrust. So what's he talking about? You can't have commitment without perseverance. And graduates, not only should Jesus be your priority, put Jesus first, but this teaches us our commitment to the Lord is a commitment to persevere. This says never give up. Never give up. Not every day of your life will be filled with sunshine. There will be some storms and some rain along the way. But you know, I have found that the best lessons in my life have come through difficult experiences. And I have learned through the years that failure is often God's way to success. So don't be afraid to fail. The only people who never fail are the people who never try anything. And don't be afraid to try. And remember this, if God allows a situation to come into your life, it is because He wants to use it to transform you into the image of His Son. And to commit to the Lord means that you let the Lord look after you completely. You give Him complete control of your life. I think about a man named David Livingston. He was a Scottish missionary. He served deep in the heart of the African jungle, plagued by poisonous insects, gnawed by hunger, harassed by wild beasts and uncivilized men. He was stricken with sickness and finally dying on his feet. And he said, every day of my life, I repeat Psalm 37, 5. And from it, I find the strength to go on, knowing that God will act in his time. Commit to the Lord. Persevere. Never give up. I don't know where God will take you. But I know if you'll let Him, He'll go with you. And I know when it gets tough, that He'll be there for you. And you persevere. Never give up. And then look at verse 5 and we see the third lesson for life. Verse 5 says, trust the Lord. Now, trust implies patience, a waiting. And one of the most important lessons that we can learn in this life is the lesson of waiting on God. James 1, 4 said, Let patience have her perfect work that you may be complete. And the word means that you may be mature, that you may be all that God intends for you to be. I do a little bit of gardening as a hobby And I've learned something. Now I can put a seed in the ground one day. And I'm not going to have anything to eat the next day. It takes some time. And time is good. And God wants us to be patient. Life is like that. As we trust God, He matures us. And He grows us. And by faith we wait upon Him. And we learn to live by faith and and not by sight. And one of the things, young people, that I have learned through the years is this, and I see it almost every week, life is beyond our control. It really is. Things happen to us that we can't understand. In fact, There will be times in your lives when you won't be able to understand what you're going through and you'll just have to trust. You'll have to learn to wait on the Lord. There will be days when nothing makes sense and days when the challenges you face in your vocation are greater than you are. And those will be the days when trusting in the Lord and having patience will see you through. Let me close with a story. There was an old man who lived in Nova Scotia in a fishing village there. And this old man was known for his wisdom. Everybody came to see him. 
to talk over their problems with him because he was wise. And he always could give them some good, sound advice. Well, there was a little boy who lived in that village, about 10 years old. And for whatever reason, he just wanted to play a trick on the old man. And so he caught a little sparrow, a little bird, and he put it in his hands like this. And he went up to the old man and he said, Sir, I have a bird in my hands. Tell me, is it alive or is it dead? And if the old man said the bird was dead, the boy would open his hands and let the bird fly away. And if the old man said the bird was alive, he would mash it and crush it and open his hands and let it fall at the old man's feet. Either way, he thought he had the old man. So the old man looked at the boy and he looked at his hands and he didn't say anything for a long, long time. And then he smiled and here's what he said. Son, the answer is in your hands. The answer is in your hands. Where will life take you? The answer is in your hands. If you will put Jesus first, if you will never give up, and if you will trust Him and be patient, he will take you exactly where He wants you to be. And not only will you begin well, you will end well. And that's my prayer for you. That you will end well and bring glory to His name. I love you. Our church family loves you. We're proud of you. Let's pray together and then I'm going to recognize you. Our Father, we thank you today. For each of our graduates, you created them in your image. They are your children, and you have blessed them. And Lord, in your word, you tell us that we are to be light to the world, and I pray that you will help these graduates to be your light, to radiate your message of love and joy. You have said that as your followers, we are to be the salt of the earth. And Father, I pray that you help these graduates to be your salt. That wherever you send them, that they will take away the blandness of routine living and bring peace and healing to the anguished souls that come along their path. And Lord, I pray you would help them to be worth their salt, that they may not become flat and useless. And Lord, you have said that as your followers, we're to be like leaven. And I pray that you would help these graduates to be your leaven to this world, pointing people to Jesus Christ, the bread of life. And on this day of commencement, in the lives of our graduates, I pray that you be their light in days of darkness, and their salt in days of blandness, and their leaven in days of failure that they may rise again to celebrate your love. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And all God's sweet people said, Amen. Amen.